Please welcome the 20th Prime Minister of Canada, the Right Honourable Jean Chrétien. How are you? First class. You're feeling good. Feeling great. You've got lots of energy. You're still going. You just turned 80. How does that like? How do you feel about that? Oh, but you know, it's. Uh, I had a party with the family, and I was there with my kid brother, 96, <laughs> and our, and his kid sister, 95. Some good genes. So you're not about to get rid of me. <laughs> so we're 50 years now since you entered public life. Yeah. Right? What, do you, what a run that's been. What do you make of that, the early days? You know, in Ke Quebec, we have to have a BA first, and after that, we decide to be a lawyer, doctor, or architect, and so on. I wanted to be an architect. And my dad said, you will never be elected as an architect. You're going to the law school. <laughs> and in those days, when dad spoke, yeah. We listen. I probably not like that today. Not no. at all. Not at all. Yeah, but, uh, because, yeah. because, but wouldn't would you have been happier? What if you were the best architect ever? I have no choice. <laughs> you have no choice. No, because you know, Dad wanted me to be a politician. I guess he was not wrong. I've been a politician apparently for a long time, for forty years. I remember seeing you, and I'd interviewed you around that time, and there was a part of me that thought, I don't think you really want to quit. No, no, I had made up my mind to quit. Uh, I was not supposed to run a third time. Yeah. In fact, uh, some incident forced me to run in a way. <laughs> what, which incidents? Oh, there was people. There's always people who want to take over your job. You know, some guys are waiting for you yeah. to get out, so they will sit there. Right. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and it, it's normal in life. And, uh, but some were a bit too pushy, and my wife was unhappy, and she said, four more years. <laughs> And here I was, you know, when she said that. We were at a meeting, you know, everything went well. It was a convention in uh, early in 2000. And uh, there was rumors that when he will go and so on. And some had been unpleasant. And uh, so all my people said, Prime Minister, you have to run another time. I said, no, I promise, Aline, I will quit after two terms. And it's a done deal. So Aline... Uh, said, I'm sorry, I have to go. She was there. You know, the people of the riding are waiting for us at 24 Sussex. So I don't take too long, Jean, because you have to meet them. And she got up, went out, reopened the door, just sneak in, and she said, four more years. <laughs> she got a standing ovation, me the first. <laughs> and and uh, I had my third term that way. It turned out to be my best term. Right. It's when I, for example, I... You know, I said no to the banks who wanted to do all sort of crazy things like the bankers in New York. We said no. It's when I said to George Bo, you go alone to Iraq. I'm not going with you. What does that rank on your list of accomplishments? Well, <laughs> don't try to rank things you do in life too much. You know, you do your best on a daily basis. And but you know, in terms of significant, significant moments in Canada, that's up there. You know, this was very important for internationally to show that Canada was independent. We were the first to govern and balance the books. You know, for the first time, we seven surplus when I was prime minister. You know, the Tories replaced us eventually. They started to have deficit. <laughs> it's always like that. And that, <laughs> and now it's what happened to the United States too. Okay. And you know, George W. Bush started to have deficit. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, and, of course... Uh, Are you saying it's because those particular parties, no, that's how I, they operate? You no, know, I, you know, I don't want to debate the politics of today, you know. I want to talk about, you asked me, what we did. Yeah. We said, uh, you know, we passed the Clarity Act in Quebec because, you know, there was two referendums with very confusing questions. And now, you know, I said, no, it's over. The question has to be, do you want to separate yes or no? Now the Brits for Scotland have a very short question. When it was uh, uh, Monte Negro uh, wanted to have independence, you know, the, the European community insisted on a short, clear question about separation, not about a dream deal, about uh, the reality, mm -hmm. and plus a clear majority in Montenegro. So that was very important for me uh, because I'm a, I'm a Canadian, a proud Canadian, a very proud Francophone. I, mm -hmm. 
I still speak English with a French accent to know who I am, you know. <laughs> so, and, uh, so it's a choice, you're making a choice. Oh, yes. Only Maurice Chevalier and I uh -huh. ever had to practice to keep the French accent in English. <laughs> The, uh, the conversation about Canada and regionalism has changed over the years. For the longest time, it was about English and French. Um, ways of immigration have changed that. Alberta has changed that. Prime Minister Harper has changed that discussion. But if someone comes to Canada today, let's say they want to move to Quebec City, or they want to move to Shawinigan, and they're facing the prospect of the Quebec Charter of Values. It's a very different time. Yeah, but, you know, it is a political debate at this time. I saw last night the leader of uh, the Liberal Party was strong on that. You know, he, he came clear. You know, for me, I uh, was, I did the Charter of Rights for Mr. Trudeau as Minister of Justice. I did all the works in the committees. I was the one going to London and so on to convince the lords and the members of parliament to approve it because it was very humiliating that we were a country and we had to go to England to change our constitution. <laughs> so I fought for that. And I said that in Quebec last week. Charter is not for the protection of the majority. It is for the protection of the minority. Uh, you know, in politics, your responsibility is not to go on it with Gallup. You know, you, you have to they talk about the tyranny of the majority in a society. You, you cannot go that way. You have to look at all the aspects of the problems and make the right decision for the good of the nation. But it seems like politics has changed that way. Yeah, but it's not passed yet there. Right. You know, it's a controversy. I don't want to get involved into the politics of it, but uh, because, uh, you know, I'm not in politics. But I'm strong for the rights of citizens and the protection of the minority. It's what made Canada such an exceptional country that we've been able over the years to be an example of, of protection of rights compared to any other nation in the world. When you look back... When you look back at, I remember when you were on the show last time in the Red Chair, you were talking about how you have a different view of protesters because you used to be a protester. Of course. Yeah. But there was that time where you know with the gas and then there was the Schoenigan handshake and there was that thing. Yeah. Do you, do you look back at all those decisions? Were but the right it's decisions? part of democracy. You know, when I, they were protesting against me, I would say to myself, Jean, you deserve it, the return of the elevator to you. Yeah. <laughs> because I, when I was a kid, I was organizing protests. You know, at the student university, Laval University, you know, I organized protests in the National Assembly. When I arrived there with my friends one night, there were more policemen than we were protesters <laughs> because somebody had leaked my coming with my friends. So, uh, but it was part of, of the democracy. Right. And uh, we were protesting of some of the decisions made by Duplessis in those days who were to my like, you know, too much to the right for my liking. But when you were the prime minister, were you happy with the way those protests were handled? Generally speaking, yes. I had to grab one by the neck one day yeah. because he came a bit too close. <laughs> but uh, that is uh, another problem. Have you, uh, have you seen the beer? Have you seen somebody made a beer and it was actually called a Shawinigan handshake? And it's a guy getting <laughs> choked? Yes, you know, they, yes. In my Shawinigan, they made this uh, Shawinigan handshake beer. I'm grabbing the devil here by yeah. the neck. Yeah, yeah. Now the new, the new sign is me grabbing by the neck. Do you know who? Who are you grabbing now? Don Sherry. Oh. <laughs> is it tasty? Have you had it? Very good. <laughs> Do you have sherry? And, and a strong one. Is it a strong beer as After well? a couple of that, you grab another guy by the neck. <laughs> <laughs> We'll stick around more. We'll finish the catch on right after this. All right, coming up. More than 40 years on Parliament Hill. He's got some strong opinions on Canadian politicians and on honesty. That's next. Of Canada, Jean Chrétien. That's recent, isn't it? That was May <laughs> last year. You know, I'm, 
Bruce Hartley, who works with me, it was, we had a party, you know, he decided to get married, it was about time, and that, uh, <laughs> and that uh, we had a party in, in uh, Virginia or North Carol Carolina, and that, uh, Carolina, and that uh, I was sitting next, and Bruce and his friends do that, we call it kiteboarding. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting next to his instructor, who discussed that, and he said, ask him at one time, I said, how old was the oldest guy? You trained for that. Oh, he said it was 80. Oh, really? He said, I'm going tomorrow, I'm on the 79. And that was uh, when he trained me, you know? Yeah. And uh, it was fun. I was 79. 79, that's not bad. That's not, not bad. bad. We were talking before the break about former leaders. This picture started to circulate. Yes, what is that? You and the former prime ministers. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. A bunch of liberals, huh? Right. <laughs> You and three conservatives. Yeah. Well, you were two conservatives and an alliance member is what that is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Convert. That's right. But I wanted to know, then this picture came out of you and Prime Minister Harper laughing, and I wanted to know who cracked the joke and what was it? I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife tells me that I love to laugh at my own jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so it might be me. So it could have been you. Do you get involved in any way now with the Liberal no, Party? No, um, but not much. You know, anybody who wants to call me, I talk with uh, Mr. Trudeau, uh, Justin, you know. He's called you? I, I talk to him uh, sometimes, but he has to do it his way. You know, uh, his father and I we were good friends, but he was my boss for uh, 15 years. And when I became prime minister, you know, we discuss, and he's, he said, do it your way. And it's what I'm doing to Justin, you know, it's, it's your job. I did it my way, and uh, I'm a different type of person with different backgrounds at different times. And I'm happy with the way he's handling himself, and I'm very confident that he will do very well. And he knows that he can call me any time he wants. But he will do it his way, uh, and it's, he has different advisors and so on. That, you know, the political, the politics, the personality makes a big difference in leadership. And when people say that they're all the same, it's not true. I was very different. I was a, close to Trudeau, but I was, it was a Christian time. It was Trudeau times. I worked too. I was a minister f and, uh, with Mike Pearson, who was very different of Mr. Trudeau. And we, we changed, you know. The, 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 the Tories of today are not the same Tories that existed uh, uh, when I was there, and uh, you know, they even changed their name, and that is, a, and you can see that changes in the country because of the personality of the leader. The, the leader has a lot of influence on what's happening because, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he's the one who decides. He might have very good ministers, but at the end of the day, the guy who signed the piece of paper, it's you, mm -hmm. if you're the prime minister. So you know, you have to take full responsibility of going on. But you deserve the credit, too, mm -hmm. when it's doing well. Right. Neil Young hit the government hard over the oil sands. We want to talk to Mr. Katien about that. Have you heard the controversy surrounding Neil Young and the, the oil sands these days? You know, talking about what's, what's happening. Here's, here's a press conference clip that was very interesting. To anyone with an environmental conscience, anyone who is thinking about their grandchildren, anyone who can see outside of a three-month window of, of, of corporate profit, has got to be appalled at what's going on. Neil Young faced lots of criticism and lots of support for taking yeah, a position. Yeah, but I think that, you know, it's, it's a great artist, but I will not become a singer tomorrow. It will be a disaster. <laughs> So I think that, you know, it's good that he can express in the democracy his views. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a resources that has to be eventually developed and protecting the environment. That's very important. Uh, but oil is oil, and we still have cars, and we're not about not to need oil. And we have oils that got put in the ground in Canada. We have to develop it in a responsible way. Do but I'm not there to tell them how to do it. Right. Is it, can it be done in a responsible way, ultimately? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. You know, they, you, do, you can put the man on the moon, you can get oil off the ground and put it safely into that. We, into haven't a put a man, we haven't put a man on the moon in a long time. Huh? <laughs> we haven't put a man on the moon in a long time, and there's a lot of concern with what's going on you know, in, with know, oil sands. I know, but I've been there myself. And, 
you know, and I was preoccupied with that. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me that they are improving the te technology that they do. Uh, you know, now, you know, when they repair the ground after that, uh, they have to do it properly. What was the biggest toll on your life, that being in public service and the Prime Minister for so long? What did it take on you? Not much. I gained a lot more than I lost there. You know, I love it. And I was supported by my family. I had a fantastic wife was always there making sure that, you know, I, I don't say anything too stupid and, uh, you know, that I'm dressed properly and so on. And, uh, and I behave all right. You know, I had, was supported. But it's fantastic when you look back for the things you have been able to do. You know, the people don't... I've done things that nobody remembered that give me a lot of joy. You know, I tell you, I made national parks, for example. I was minister of parks and of the north, and I was flying in the fjords of Baffin land, and I was all excited. I would tell the people in the plane, look how beautiful it is. They were looking, I didn't have to tell them. And I sat down next to my wife, and I said, Aline, on Monday I will make it a national park, and it will be in your honor. So in the money I arrived in my office, I consulted the Minister of Northern Affairs, who was Jean Chrétien. I consulted the Minister of Parks, who was Jean Chrétien. And I consulted the Minister of Indian Affairs, who was Jean Chrétien. The three agreed, and I made a national park. That's incredible. And we're going to close it out. It's still there. It's still there. Yeah. Speaking of, we're going to close it out with uh, Prime Minister Chrétien right after this. So there's many highs in the job. Like you said, you've gotten more than you've lost. And I know you said you don't want to talk about c current politics, which is fine. But what do you do when you're the prime minister and something like the Senate scandal happens? What do you do when that happens? Well, it's a problem of the prime minister. It's not my problem. Yeah. You know, it's so... Uh, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, I don't want to comment on that. It's for the House of Commons, and it's sad that incidents like that occur and create a bad image. And I think it's unfair the, with the way that the politicians are treated in Canada. I have to tell you that I've been 40 years in politics. 40 years is a long time. I've traveled the world. And I can tell you that there is no more honest political class in the world than the one we have in Canada. Mistakes are made, but it's very rare. What was it like as a world leader when you had to greet other world leaders? And I think about Suharto being one example, where you know you know that you're, you're meeting with somebody who has such a either controversial or terrible record. Well, what's that experience like for you? But you know that he is the legitimate leader of that country. We may not accept the way that he got there, you know, yeah. but he is the leader of the country. You know, they don't have real election in China, but the president of China is the president of China. Right. There's not another guy you can go to talk to. We become kind of friendly. You know, you will laugh about it, but president of China, China and Canada very often were sitting next to each other at the APEC, for example, because see alphabetic order. And sometimes these meetings are long. So the president of China will practice his English with me. <laughs> so uh, Jen Zemin and I, uh, Jean Chrétien, is teacher of English. <laughs> <laughs> what a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you. Good things to Glorious Nation. Good things. <laughs>